Good morning, Amber Jade and Indigo. Welcome to this morning's reading lesson. Today, the ally is to memorize a story. The story you need to memorize is the one that you listened to yesterday, The Very Noisy Night. So we are going to begin the lesson, and before we do, let's make sure that you are prepared, ready to start. So you will need a pencil or pen and a piece of paper. Use the pause button if you need to. Right, these are the steps to our lesson. Phonics first. We're reviewing our owl sound. Spelling with the owl words. Number three, you're going to listen to a very noisy night one more time. And at the end, you're going to draw a story map of a very noisy night. So let's first of all review the sound of the week. Owl using the grapheme OW or owl using the grapheme OU. And these are the words that we're going to look at today. So we have owl makes how now an owl. So we use OW, the graphemes, to make these words. How, now, owl. And then we use the grapheme OU to make house, mouse, sound. Let's move forward to the next step. Well, our sound of the week, we just keep learning these over and over again. And at the beginning of how we have H, owl, and at the beginning of now we have N, owl, and at the end of owl, you can see I've colored it in blue, because it's a different sound at the end. And it starts with the grapheme O, W, owl. And let's, let's look at the next group of words. And you can see that the H is in black, the O, U, owl sound is in green, and the end sounds are in blue. So, ha, owl, s. So, S, E makes the s sound. And we've got m, owl, s for mouse, and we've got s, owl, nd for sound. So, we have our six words. How, now, owl, h, owls, m, owls, sound. So we need to practice those all the way through the week so you're familiar with them. So let's look at our spelling words of the week. Do remember number one is now, how, owl, mouse, house, sound. And they all have the owl sound in them. And you can remember that now we have the n at the beginning and owl at the end. And if we have how, we have the h at the beginning and the l at the end. Ha, owl. And we have owl followed by mouse and house. And finally, sound. So be very good with all of these words. So remember how to spell them. Remember where the owl sound is in each word. That will help you to spell them. So we will keep reviewing these all week. Let's move to the next step. Right, the very noisy night. So let's watch the video. It's a different video to, to yesterday. It'll be shorter but it's the same story. So hopefully this will connect very quickly. The Very Noisy Night by Diana Hendry. It was the middle of the night and Big Mouse was fast asleep in his big bed. Little Mouse was wide awake in his little bed. Big Mouse, Big Mouse, called Little Mouse. I can hear something rushing round the house, huffing and puffing. Big Mouse opened one eye and one ear. He still need a wind. He said, can I come into your bed? 
asked Little Mouse. No, said Big Mouse. There isn't room. And he turned over and went back to sleep. Little Mouse lay listening to the wind. Then suddenly, between a huff and a puff, came a tap, tap, tap. Little Mouse climbed out of bed, opened the front door, just a crack, and peeped out. Whoosh! went the wind. But there was no one outside. Big Mouse, Big Mouse, called Little Mouse. I could hear someone tapping. Perhaps there's a burglar on the roof. Big Mouse got out of bed and opened the bedroom curtains. Look, he said. It's only a branch tapping on the window. Go back to sleep. Can I come into your bed? Asked Little Mouse. No, said Big Mouse. You wriggle. Little Mouse lay in his own bed and listened to the wind huffing and puffing and the branch tap tapping and someone calling. Hoo-hoo, hoo-hoo. Little Mouse climbed out of bed again. This time he looked under it. Then he looked in the wardrobe and, feeling very frightened, he cried, Big Mouse, Big Mouse, I think there's a ghost in the house and it's looking for me. It keeps calling, hoo hoo, hoo hoo. Big Mouse sighed, sat up and listened. It's only an owl, he said. It's awake like you. Can I come into your bed? asked Little Mouse. No, said Big Mouse. Your paws are always cold. Big Mouse pulled the blanket over his head and went back to sleep. Little Mouse got back into his own bed and he lay and listened to the wind huffing and puffing and the branch tap tapping and the owl hooting, but shh, what was that? Big Mouse, Big Mouse, he called. I think it's raining inside. And Little Mouse jumped out of bed and fetched his red umbrella. Big Mouse got out of bed too. He opened the front door. Be quiet, wind, he said. Be quiet, branch, be quiet, owl. But they took no notice. Then Big Mouse went into the kitchen, turned off the dripping tap, and put away the umbrella. Can I come into your bed? asked Little Mouse. No, you're nice and snug in your own bed, said Big Mouse, taking him back to the bedroom. Little Mouse lay and listened to the wind huffing and puffing, the branch tap-tapping, and the owl hooting. And just as he was beginning to feel very sleepy indeed, he heard... <coughs> Big Mouse, Big Mouse, he called. You're snoring. Wearily, Big Mouse got up. He put his ear muffs on Little Mouse's ears. He put a paper clip on his own nose and he went back to bed. Little Mouse lay and listened to nothing. It was very, very, very quiet. He couldn't hear the wind huffing or the branch tapping or the owl hooting or Big Mouse snoring. It was so quiet that Little Mouse felt as he was all alone in the world. He took off the ear moss. He got out of bed and pulled a paper clip off Big Mouse's nose. Big Mouse, Big Mouse, he cried. I'm lonely. Big Mouse flung back his blanket. Bed come into my bed, he said. So Little Mouse hopped in and his paws were cold. And he needed just a little wriggle before he fell fast asleep. Big Mouse lay and listened to the wind huffing and puffing and the branch tapping and the owl hooting and Little Mouse snuffling. And very soon he heard the birds waking up. But neither of them heard the alarm clock because they were both fast asleep. Well, there you go. The very noisy night. Poor Little Mouse just couldn't get to sleep. But eventually he did. So what's our first activity? Well, if you have a piece of paper, you could divide it up into nine rectangles, like you did last week. And in the first rectangle, which would be number one, you're going to draw a picture of Little Mouse and Big Mouse in their mouse house. So you can start drawing that as soon as you're ready or you can do it after the video has finished it's up to you but you can press the pause button if you want to draw a little mouse and big mouse in their mouse house and then number two little mouse is lying in his bed and you can see the moon and the stars in the sky 
So that will be your second task. This is part of your story map. So draw a little mouse lying in his bed, trying to get to sleep with the moon and the stars shining outside above in the sky. You can press pause if you like and draw your picture of little mouse in his bed. It's up to you. You can do it later if you prefer. What about number three? Well, number three shows the first sound or noise that little mouse heard. Remember, he was lying in bed and all he could hear was this huffing and puffing round the house. And of course, when he heard it, he called out to Big Mouse. And Big Mouse told him, it's only the wind. So number three, can you draw a little mouse sitting up in his bed because he can hear the noise of the wind, the huffing and puffing of the wind. So what's going to happen next? Well, in the rest of the boxes, you're going to draw pictures for the different noises that little mouse heard. So let me give you a clue. In number four, Little Mouse could hear a tap, tap, tapping on the window. What was that tap, tap, tapping? Of course, Big Mouse ended up telling him it was only a branch. So in number four, can you draw a picture of Little Mouse in his bed maybe and the branch tap tap tapping on the window because the wind was blowing outside and making the branch tap on the window. <clears throat> what happens in number five? Well there was a new noise that little mouse could hear. Can you remember what it was? It made that sound hoo 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 and of course Little Mouse called out the Big Mouse and Big Mouse told him it was only an owl. So can you draw a picture of an owl and Little Mouse in his bed maybe for number five? How about number six? Hopefully you're writing this little information down. Number six, if you put a number in the box, number six Little Mouse could hear a drip, drip, dripping. What was making the drip, drip, dripping sound? In the end, Little Mouse thought it was raining inside. But Big Mouse told him it was only the tap. Okay, let's have a quick review because you have to memorize this story for your story map. So number four... Little Mouse could hear the tap, tap, tapping. Number five, Little Mouse could hear the noise. Hoo hoo, hoo hoo. What was making the hoo hoo sound? And then number six, Little Mouse could hear the drip, drip, dripping. Now I'm going to let you decide what's going to go in seven, in rectangle seven, eight, and nine. Can you remember what happened after the dripping sound? Well, you may remember that Big Mouse was in bed and what could Little Mouse hear? Or what was Big Mouse doing that made Little Mouse wake up? Little Mouse couldn't concentrate. What was he doing? And after that, at number eight, what did Big Mouse do when he got out of bed? What did he put on Little Mouse's ears? And what did he put on his own nose? Do you remember? Can you memorize that story? So think about the story. You might have to watch the video again just to get the right steps because you have to memorize the story and draw a story map. And the last rectangle, number nine, Remember, Little Mouse and Big Mouse didn't wake up. They slept through the alarm because they were still fast asleep. 
So your activity is draw pictures for number four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Memorize the sequence of the story. Good luck with your task. So I'd love to see you work. When you complete it, send it to yr3 at grange.harrow.school.uk Now, one of the good things about once you've done your story map, you could practice retelling your story from memory. So that will help you to memorise your story. Try and get the correct sequence. Bye for now. Speak to you tomorrow.